Chapter 33 Light And the gods said, Let there be light, and there was light. Genesis The light that a human eye can detect is only a small fraction of the electromagnetic spectrum that radiates from our sun. The waves of light that the eye cannot detect are called invisible light. The invisible light that we know of has been classified as gamma, x-ray, ultraviolet, infrared, microwave, and radio. We cannot see, hear, or feel radio waves of light unless we use a device like a stereo or satellite television that converts the light waves into something that our eyes and ears can watch or listen to. Yet this light is everywhere. Even at night, the air is full of radio waves carrying music and news on different frequencies. Electromagnetic waves, light, come to us from the stars, our sun, inside the earth, and even from brain to brain. There is some overlap between the senses. For example, we can see the visible light from the sun, and we can also feel its warmth. The frequencies of visible light correlate to the frequencies of one octave on the musical scale, but we can hear many octaves. Scientists now understand that there is about 85% more around us than we previously thought. That 85% is called dark matter because we cannot detect it with our light detecting machines. It exists, but scientists have a long way to go before realizing the unified theory of everything. Mystics, however, have been talking about it for thousands of years. They have called it spirit, subtle matter, ether, god, chi, life, energy, and light. This light is more than the invisible and visible light categories we have made up. It is the energy that is in everything. Everything is light. According to Nikola Tesla, who was one of the greatest scientists in history, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Everything we can see or touch is made up of varying vibrational frequencies of energy that we may term light. Albert Einstein, who was a contemporary of Tesla, came up with the famous equation E equals mc squared. Energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared, which states that energy is matter sped up and matter is energy slowed down. Light can condense, crystallize, or be slowed to lower frequencies. Our brain waves can fluctuate between 0.5 hertz and 30 hertz. Heightened awareness above 30 hertz is where the light from the brain runs into the radio spectrum. Brain waves are much lower in frequency than visible light, but they are still technically light and travel at the speed of light. That is why we use words like bright and enlightened for people that use their brain well. The light of truth is actual light. Thoughts are electromagnetic light and are thus material made up of photon particles that can condense into other forms. The physicist David Bohm said that mass is a phenomenon of connecting light rays, sort of freezing them into a pattern. So matter, as it were, is condensed or frozen light. When we put that together with the knowledge that thoughts are light, we can see how our thoughts can create our reality and how forms of meditation like prayer and visualization can have real effects. It is some of the science behind magic spells and rituals. Energy is everywhere, we just need to know how to convert it. One way is through concentration and focus of thought. In the Christian writings, light is synonymous with life. Talking about Jesus, John said, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus called himself the light and the life of the world. But he knew that the same energy was within everything. That is why he also said, Ye are the light of the world, and let your light shine, to his listeners. In LDS teachings, 
The life in all things is called the light of Christ. The following scripture is an example of this teaching. This comforter is the promise which I give unto you of eternal life, even the glory of the celestial kingdom, which glory is that of the church of the firstborn, even of God, the holiest of all, through Jesus Christ his Son. He that ascended up on high, as also he descended below all things, in that he comprehended all things, that he might be in all and through all things, the light of truth, which truth shineth. This is the light of Christ, as also he is in the sun, and the light of the sun, and the power thereof by which it was made, as also he is in the moon, and is the light of the moon, and the power thereof by which it was made, as also the light of the stars, and the power thereof by which they were made, and the earth also, and the power thereof, even the earth upon which you stand, and the light which shineth, which giveth you light, is through him who enlighteneth your eyes, which is the same light that quickeneth your understandings, which light proceedeth forth from the presence of God to fill the immensity of space. The light which is in all things, which giveth life to all things, which is the law by which all things are governed, even the power of God who sitteth upon his throne, who is in the bosom of eternity, who is in the midst of all things. For Mormons, Jesus is the source of light. He did identify himself with light, but he did the same with others. That is because Jesus was initiated into the mysteries of the gods and knew that all is one. His teachings bear many similarities to Hindu teachings. Here are some comparisons from the Upanishads, which were written hundreds of years before Jesus, and the New Testament. Jesus said, I am the bread of life, and he is called the firstborn. John 16.32 I am the food of life, I am the firstborn of the world of truth, born before the gods, born in the center of immortality. The light of the sun is my light. Titeria Upanishad 3.10.6 Jesus, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John 17.3 For a man who knows him, the light of truth shines. The wise who have seen him in every being, on leaving this life, attain life immortal. Kena Upanishad Those that know him have found immortality. Katha Upanishad, part 6 Jesus, and if the blind guide the blind, both will fall into a pit. Matthew 16.14 Abiding in the midst of ignorance, thinking themselves wise and learned, fools go aimlessly hither and thither, like blind led by the blind. Mundaka Upanishad Jesus, I pray for these, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. John seventeen twenty and 21 He who is in the sun, and in the fire, and in the heart of man is one. He who knows this is one with the one. Maitri Upanishad 6.17 Jesus, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few be there that find it. Matthew 7.14 Strive for the highest, and be in the light. Sages say the path is narrow, and difficult to tread. Narrow as the edge of a razor. Katha Upanishad Jesus, Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. Matthew 13, 13. They have seen, but they have not understood. Chandogya Upanishad 8, 7-12 Jesus, the kingdom of God is within you. Luke seventeen twenty one. In the castle of Brahman, our own body, there is a small shrine. The little space within the heart is as great as this vast universe. The heavens and the earth are there. Chandogya Upanishad 8.1 Jesus, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Matthew 6, 22 and 23. While we are here in this life, we may reach the light of wisdom. And if we reach it not, how deep is the darkness? Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad 
There are many other parallels between the words of Jesus and the Upanishads. This is not surprising, as writings from the first century tell of Jesus having studied in India and Tibet in his earlier years. In the Svetasvatara Upanishad, we read, This is the God whose light illumines all creation. He is in all and sees all. The all-seeing eye of God is a symbol used by various cultures to represent the light. Freemasons use imagery of an eye with rays of light emanating from it. Interestingly, the eye of light is depicted between a sun and a moon. This is because it represents the greater light. The eye of providence is also found as an eye within a triangle surrounded by sunbeams in the Great Seal of the United States, in the Mormon Temple, and in some cathedrals. In Egypt, the omniscience and omnipresence of light was shown as the eye of Ra, the sun god, and the sun disk Aten. The sun was symbolically called God's eye in ancient teachings because light is conscious of its surroundings, and there is not a space where light does not exist. Those that comprehend the light and realize that they are part of it know that they are part of God. In truth, who knows God becomes God. Mandaka Upanishad Gods associated with light are Jesus, the light of the world, Lucifer, the light bringer, Prometheus, the light bearer, and Savitri, a goddess that brought light to the world. When Siddhartha received his revelation under the Bodhi tree, he became a Buddha, which means unenlightened one. He then spread light to others. An enlightened being illuminates the minds of others. Initiates of esoteric societies have always identified themselves with the light. The Essenes called themselves the Sons of Light. The Illuminati are self-proclaimed enlightened people. Dion Fortune started the Society of the Inner Light, which spawned from the Golden Dawn. The Mason's search is for light. The Egyptian Book of the Dead was titled Book of Emerging Forth into the Light. With the knowledge that conscious thoughts are electromagnetic waves, scientists are considering that the sun itself is conscious. All stars are large spheres of consciousness, including our sun. Franz Hartmann wrote, The sun is a center of energy and a storehouse of power. Each living being contains within itself a center of life, which may grow to be a sun. Each star is an entity of consciousness, just as each human is a conscious individual. Only stars are much bigger and have a much stronger influence on the cosmos. It is astral light, or starlight, that psychics tap into when receiving a revelation. The astral light affects human affairs and development. The ancient study of these effects was called astrology. Astral projection, or soul travel, is the ability to connect one's consciousness with the astral light. This is what some call the Akashic Records, where all information is stored. Within the tiny spectrum of light called visible light, we see the rainbow, nature, and all of the beautiful art that humans have created. Imagine what it would be like to sense all light. Some are able to perceive a field of light around people called an aura. Light was seen around the head of Moses, Jesus, and many others. When people have near-death experiences, they describe going toward a light. Once they are in the light, they sense indescribable sounds and colors. Within the light, they feel the source of life and unconditional love. They understand that all is one. It is said that meditation can open the mind's eye to the light. It is my hope and prayer that the whole of humanity will raise their vibrational frequencies and see greater light through knowledge and love. My favorite verse as a youth reads, That which is of God is light, and he that receiveth light and continueth in God, receiveth more light, and that light groweth brighter and brighter until the perfect day.